What a exciting, exhilarating, intense ride the Azerbaijan Grand Prix was. Paul from America F1 and I can't believe how tempered, how disciplined Oscar Piastri is. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is a winner of FP. He won Formula 3. He won Formula 2. There was that big controversy about where he was going. And he said, no, I didn't. I'm not going there. I'm going to McLaren. And everybody was like, ooh, who's this? Now you see who Oscar Piastri is. For 35 laps, he kept one Charles Leclerc, or Leclerc, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I've been getting comments about my pronunciation. I'm so sorry. One Charles Leclerc behind him for 35 laps. No mistakes. If you didn't know about Oscar Piastri before, you know about him now. And we're going to break it down right here at America F1. Paul, Sherm, and the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Yeah, America F1. America F1. It's a golden run. Sherm, sure, no sound. I think Sherman is playing the theme tune, but it's not playing. Oh, Hi, everybody. Ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's Paul here. <laughs> While Sherman plays with buttons. Uh, what an incredible race. It was really stunning. There was a wonderful scene about four laps from the end, five laps from the end, where both the McLaren and the Ferrari came through sideways on one of the turns. Oh, yeah. And it was just a classic. They were rallying through those because they had no tires left. And those boys ran those cars ragged edge. Anyway, so let's, let's go back to... Wasn't it? I mean, those... It was the most exciting, boring race I've watched in a long time, yes. <laughs> it, it was a juxtaposition of greatness <laughs> yeah. and like, oh, is this yeah. anybody going to pass here? Anybody going to pass? <laughs> The longest straight in Formula One, and there was only a handful of passes. And you could see the sweat dripping from the drivers yeah. as they lined up for the second, the last turn to get onto that long straight. And every one of those drivers to try and make a pass was just, oh my God, they had to just do so much work, st store up battery power. You know, just everything had to be right. And then they were trying to slipstream each other. And it was just... It was just so boring at times to see the effort they had to do. And then a procession through the old Espens and snakes up through the castle area. It, it was, I mean, the speed they get down that straight is amazing. Oh, you know? It's wow. so long. And yeah. you could tell the difference between, because the, the Ferrari, it it's an all around car, but the front line speed this year isn't, the best you know williams is always one of the tops in the speed trap and you could see it how hard it was for lewis to get past carlin pinto franco we'll talk about him later what a, what a great race he's had what a extraordinary rookie he's becoming two races. you know yep. two races and he doesn't have and a seat. no race no, no race seat for next seat. year yeah. what a mistake somebody what has to mistake. sign the guy audi whoever yeah, yeah. Uh, he has yeah. he has to get a seat yeah. he, i mean he's proven yeah. right now already but mm. You saw that. What I love, they're going down the straight and the leaves are flying up in the air because there's leaves yeah. on the straight. And I'm like, yeah. okay, there's leaves, there's dust. I wonder how. And somebody complained. And I, I think it was George Russell. He complained about something got in his intake. A visor, visor rip. I, I'm just going to say, the visor rip got into his uh, his box. Yeah. Yeah, and so he said he thought he thought a visor rip had gotten in so there because he could feel the difference. If if leaves get into your intake, I wonder if that blocks anything. Would that block something, or is it so hot in there, Paul? Would it would the leaves just catch on fire and melt? No, 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 no. But I will say, actually, it's funny because back in the day, and I'm talking back in the day, they you could see the pit crews would stick their hand in those air boxes and pull crap out, yeah, and and declutter. Uh, uh, you know, so that they had their airflow, which is so important. And you're going back to the, I think, back to the 80s, 90s when that used to happen. But uh, 
Yeah, the cars are so, look, you know, the cars are so accurate. They're so every single portion, every single vent, every single arrow has a purpose. And if something like a visor gets in, I mean, a visor is going to be this big. So, you know, I know we're doing something here, you know, but if it, that is blocking, if it, if it hits hard and you're going so fast, mm -hmm. if that hits hard against the thing, like it's going to be a reduction in airflow, then it's going to make a big difference to a car. When you it's see, like when, they, oh, sorry. when you see Oscar and when you see how exhilarated and together, like just, you know, he's so composed, Oscar Piastri is. And when you see this guy stand and when he's getting up on that car, Paul, he couldn't even really, did you see? He kind of slipped. He didn't even, he hasn't been up, on, he hasn't been up on the car. He, you know, everybody gets up on the car and they put their hands up and they throw it up in the air and like, yeah, look at me, look at me. And he kind of almost fell. <laughs> He almost you, you can off have the all of the adrenaline you need to drive those cars and that was a hard race and he was also spent most of his time in his mirrors uh looking at charles making sure that he got the right gaps wow. but when he got out of that car i mean you, you could tell this was the first time that oscar was truly exhilarated by that win he knew he won it fair and square and he won it with a little bit of the uh i keep forgetting the guy's name but they used to call him the uh, professor so that was alan prost alan prost and this and we now recently in the modern age we've been talking about carlos science being using the same sort of technique and this time we saw oscar do it and he really did measure that race he was very good i was very impressed with him yeah i mean by far he's the driver of the day and i think mm. the rookies are right behind him but the the pressure that he had he couldn't make one mistake and he didn't make one mistake he had to manage the tires because he was saying at first the fronts like all of a sudden just shut off and he was all in the rears and then all of a sudden they switched on what and it when you listen to a lot of the drivers they're really complaining this year about the tires is it something that pirelli is doing you think differently with these compounds or is it just the tire degradation is so different from every track that they really can't find the window where the tires are firing consistently. I, th I think aero plays a major part in this. And uh, so certain aero will wear tires down. And I think that Pirelli goes and takes the data from a previous race, from a previous year, mm -hmm. and they try to make another compound based on the requests of the teams and the drivers whether they feel that, you know, oh, we need to actually make this tire a bit more wearing so there's more pit stops or they buy more tires. <laughs> but, <laughs> that's a marketing ploy. <laughs> but uh, I, I do think that, you know, no matter how good Pirelli are at understanding these cars, like they don't get enough running. So therefore, it's, it's, they know what had to make a tire, but throwing it at these cars at these speeds right. and every single different type of track yeah. and different literally the material of the track uh, i don't think there's an actual science to what they could predict is going to be yeah well this tire is going to last you 53 laps and then we see some guys are doing you know 40 on them or they're doing 60 laps on them if, if you get my drift get your drift <laughs> drifting <laughs> 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 I, I, again, I think the, the, the shot of the show for me, the shot of the race was the two of them. And this just shows you how the mindset works of the driver that's behind the other driver. Mm -hmm. So in this case, Charles behind Lando and when, when sorry, not Lando, uh, Oscar, when Oscar went wide and he threw the back, Charles was so in the zone of following Oscar that he didn't realize the line that Oscar was taking was going to throw his ass out as well. And it just shows you. And if you remember when, when Lewis was chasing Russell a couple of years ago, when Russell then threw it all away in the last couple of laps because they were following so close to the mm -hmm. car in front, you zone in to the car in front and you're so keyed in to what the guy in front is doing, every gear change, every, every piece. And you need to be doing exactly the same thing in sync. So when he makes a mistake, you can go for it. And just to watch the two of them make that little bit mistake, it just told me Charles is so in the zone that he didn't cop that, uh, you know, when, when Carlos went a little, uh, when Oscar went a little wide and his back kinked out, 
it was too late. Charles had followed and Charles had done the same. And it was just to watch them both do that. It was just for me, that was the thing of the show. Yeah, they, both, they, watch, they both fishtailed at the same time. And like yeah. he fishtailed yeah. and then, then here comes Charles and he fishtails. And I was like, yeah. it just showed not only the intensity, but they were both not only, like you're saying, they're in the zone and they're both following. Charles was yeah. following exactly his line. And he's yeah. like, one mistake and I got him. Yeah. And he even said, they asked him, like, do you think you were ever going to catch him? He's like, you know, I did everything I could. You know, hats off to him. But they're faster in the straight. And that's where, because you really, you have to get for the DRS to work, right? It's one second and under. But to really yeah, make yeah. a pass in such a long straight, you have to really get under about six tenths to really make yep. make it work so you can dive in on that first turn. And that's where, you know, Oscar had yeah, made the his last, pass. the last... The last 20 laps, we were just watching that every time they would go around to certain points, we needed we needed Charles. Charles needed to be four tenths behind Oscar in order to make coming off the last turn. It was the only way he was going to pass him. And he didn't make it. He couldn't. I don't think he got to four tenths more than twice. Yeah. The rest of the time, he was six tenths, seven tenths. And then, of course, to watch the two boys, at, uh, you know, and the thir- three, three laps to go. Uh, the what, two second the two second drivers what do you think <laughs> now going forward now that oscar's mm. won this race and linda lando's still in contention because he had a great race he had a great comeback right i mean he started <laughs> he started way out in the back he didn't make it to q3 and he made a good recovery drive and still finished ahead of max for stepping by a couple points going forward are there still going to be papaya rules? Is you think Oscar's still going to play the tail gunner if he out qualifies Lando again? No, if you want my opinion, uh, I think that the big meetings, the big discussion about Oscar would play rear gunner to Lando. Uh, if it came down to a 50 50 decision, it was going to be Oscar would play rear gunner. And I think that this has just turned itself on its head now. And I'd say McLaren are going to be in a real head scratcher uh, going into the next race, which is less than a week away. And I think that if it's switched around, that Oscar does the faster qualification, like, okay, so sorry, we should just do this for the sake of the viewers. We should just say from a points point of view, what was a position where Lando was the one that was going to overhaul Max's points has now been switched around and Oscar is now within reaching distance of overhauling Max's points as well. So now we have two McLaren drivers in the potential here to overhaul Max's points before the end. Never mind the team championship, which of course McLaren is now 20 points ahead of Red Bull. Oh no. <laughs> so looking at charles's perspective and being behind oscar for 35 laps and doing everything you can give me more power okay well, you got more power okay where can i pick up time okay we well, can pick up time here they're doing dummies like saying oh well maybe we'll come in the pit you know hey plan c plan d plan e none of those plans were working and it was sad for me because i i think charles right now is has more poles but the least conversion rate from poles to wins in the history of formula one and that is sad because i love charles i think he's a great driver Mm -hmm. but that statistic is gonna haunt him until he can start converting these poles to wins I have a funny feeling that come um, January the 1st, 2025, when that car, which has now shown capabilities, the Ferrari, in the hands of Lewis, is going to show something very different. And I think this is why they've paid the big bucks for Lewis to come to Ferrari. Yep, he's got to get his ass comfortable in that seat in Ferrari, but I think we're going to see some really great stuff, as long as the Ferrari keeps developing. Remember, we're in this this zone now when we come to 2025 it's not the new engines it's not the new regulations Mm -hmm. it's going to be tweaks it's going to be changes but pretty much we've seen a lot of those teams have now understood what red bull did 
and we're going to start seeing these differences. So my point being, is Charles going to be as good in that Ferrari as Lewis? Well, he's got the familiarity. He's got the familiarity of the team, the familiarity of how the car drives. But a guy like Lewis gets in a car, and after two or three laps, he gets a sense of what that car is. And he will do enough sim practice to understand that the nuances, the changes to how the Mercedes might drive to how the Ferrari might drive. And I think come 2025, we're going to see the Ferraris are going to be up there a lot more. Um, and the potential to not just get it on good place qualities, but also to actually get it to the podium more and more um, until Lewis will get a few wins out of that Ferrari. Now, we, we have more on Lewis because he's had some very poignant things to say about his car and the tires and what's going on at Mercedes. And we'll get to that at the end of the show. But before we get into these rookies, which is the next segment that we're going to talk about, let's remember everyone out there to like, subscribe, and hit the notification button if you're watching us on YouTube. And if you're listening to us on Spotify, we thank you. Tell your friends, tell your family. We are a burgeoning channel. We also ask you to be be part of our community on YouTube where you also get different videos that the public doesn't get. You'll get Q and A's with Paul and I as the community grows. And we will also take your advice on what segments to run on the show. So, and, and if you are one of the first uh, members of our channel to on the community and you, and you want to be a part of the show, we'll even have you on, on as a, on a segment on our show yeah. which because we have no ego in the game we're all 100 percent about formula one and the love of formula one we love the sport so much and we want to bring that joy to viewers and listeners around the world paul awesome. let's talk about these rookies what do you got to say about one franco colin pinto I uh, congratulations to him. Two races, two sets of points. Why isn't he signed up for twenty five? I mean, I, I get it. They gave him a chance in the Williams, but at the same time, he's been that's a really adult head on his shoulders um, when he gets comfortable with that car. And I forgot about it. I forgot about it during the race until someone said, I can't believe science is going to be driving that car next year. And then we cut away to science crashing. (laughs) (laughs) Oops. Oops. You're telling me. I flew all the way to Kentucky to to get some of your fried chicken and and a car wasn't even working today. I I cannot believe that Colopinto doesn't ever drive yet for next year. I would be very surprised if they didn't find him a seat in, what is it, the Haas, maybe? Uh, Audi, are, Audi both maybe. Of, are both of them signed up for the Haas? I'm not sure. Um, either way, my, my point is that he has to actually, absolutely, he's got to be allowed to flourish. He's very good, very measured head. And I think, you know, hats off to Williams this race. I know they can be very track specific, but even at that, for both cars to end up in the points, um, they drove in pretty good races but for both those Williams to be that strong uh, is very cool I'm very pleased for them which what I took note of is you do know Logan Sargent never out qualified Alex Albon we, right never we, right? we have to let Logan go dude. Right. we well, just have but, to but let you know go. that then you take <laughs> yeah. Franco he comes in and in his second race he actually out qualified Alex Albon by three tenths which mm. is pretty remarkable on a track he's never raced at he's never raced in baku he's never yeah. been on this racetrack uh, and, and there wasn't a there wasn't a string of, of um quotations from williams saying oh you know alex had a hard time with the car or the balance no. wasn't right they made no mis- they made no complaints so it was a straight up the guy is actually very good and in a car that he's not used to now talking about a little bit talking about oliver berman how many times has Kevin Magnuson out qualified Nico Hulkenberg? Hol- Not very many. Guess what? Oliver Ali out qualified the Hulk by two tenths on this race. He's never been in that car before, Paul. This this is a guy who just drove that Ferrari. You know, he's never been in the car. Like here you go, sit sit in the car. Oh, okay, and he. <laughs> 
out-qualified the Hulk, who is one of the better qualifiers on the grid. Yes, he is. I mean, yeah, the Hassas did pretty well. Uh, I, he, he, it just, just shows you... the. F okay, so first of all, hats off to Oli. I think he did very well. I'm glad that he's going to be coming to Formula 1. Um, but it also shows you, I mean, either Lewis was struggling with that Mercedes or... Ollie knew how to keep him at bay, but he kept him at bay lap after lap after lap for a long time. He did, but I mean, Lewis did say that the tires were off mm. and that he had to do so much yeah. managing in the car. And they, they not you only could did, see him, yeah, you not could only see him pulling, yeah. not only did he talk about it, but one of the commentators on the post race show uh, also talked about it. He even, which is strange, he even took the time to say all the things that Lewis was doing just to turn the car and yeah. the telemetry oh, yeah, shows he was it. fighting it. Yeah. And then Toto so, apologized at the end. He knew it too. Toto yeah. said it publicly. And then Lewis didn't yeah. even, he didn't even answer him because he stayed quiet on the radio. No. That was the best way to answer, <laughs> say nothing. And then, no. because <laughs> once again, it's Lewis side of the garage that has to do all the testing. It's Lewis side of the garage that has all the problems. It's Lewis side of the garage that had to take a new engine because they put one of the parts on wrong. It's consistently, he says it, hey, in practice, I'm leading practice. I'm, I'm P1, I'm P2. And then all of a sudden qualifying comes and I'm a half a second to a second off the pace I was in, in practice. With, yeah. So... He's like, and, pub and publicly saying, by the way, publicly saying, guys, get my pressures right between Q1 and Q2. He said, you've got to get my tire pressures up. He and said it to them. And why is it always on his side of the garage? Do we need, I don't know. Do we need the Nico Rosberg switch? Uh, Give me your people and you take my people. Remember that? Like, okay, I'll take all your mechanics and all your engineers and then you take all mine. Maybe we need that, or we need another yeah, too late. secret email too late. or something like that. It's too late. Seven races to go. It's done. Uh, he is walking out that door, and he's doing the best he can with what they've provided him with. It's a shame. Uh, I know that Russell Russell gained two places, so he got himself a nice podium again. But realistically, fifth and ninth was just not great. I mean, um, he, that, that car showed so much more potential a few races ago, and they're falling back again. I mean, so. you see this meme with the, like, Russell, competitors keep crashing out. <laughs> get free yeah. wins and podiums. And, you know, I mean, he wasn't expecting to get third today. He didn't drive a third-place car. He, he he was literally the best that that car should have been and was fifth or sixth, and that's yeah, where he was what running. The, what the hell has happened? I mean, they were winning races a couple of races ago, and now they're just falling back, and it's embarrassing. But anyway, it won't be Lewis's problem soon. <laughs> no, but I think Lewis has said that everybody else came with upgrades and that they didn't have any upgrades uh, for this race and that yeah. obviously their upgrades are working. What did you think about this safety car? Why a virtual safety car with the crash, not a full safety car? And it was double yellows. What When a crash of that magnitude happens on track, shouldn't that be an instant safety car? I would have thought so. It wasn't in a high, it wasn't in a high speed area. They just come, they just come around the corner almost. Um, so I don't know if it's based on that or how they make that judgment, but I think it should have been this full safety car straight away. That's uh, so what I, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I think it should have been a full safety car. I don't think it should have been a safety, uh, just a, you know. And Max had something to say about that. And, Typically, Max, no filter. He just says it, you know, this is what it is, and this is what I got to say, and I'm going to say it. And he came out and said, I don't understand it. What, what are they doing with a virtual safety car? Like, it's a major mm. accident. Why don't we go straight to red flag or straight to the safety car? I, I, why are we even taking the chance with all that debris that a car could go over that or go near them? And I agree. Mm. And this is the same thing that happened last year, if you remember, in Suzuka with, with Carlos, uh, I think it was, was it Carlos Sainz or who? No, it was, um, it was uh, Pierre Gasly. Remember, Pierre Gasly in, in Japan last year in Suzuka, and it was wet, and they didn't call that, they had the tractor come out 
kind of close to the track and he just blew a gasket about yeah, well, why are we having illegal, this? Yeah. Like, yeah. what is going on? You know, yeah. the, the safety of the drivers is paramount. And any instance where we think that driver safety can be, uh, un, I won't say unencumbered because that's not the right word, but any any anything where the safety of the drivers or at Jeopardy or at Pearl, we should take the extreme caution on that. And on a yeah, crash, the, uh, the death of the death of Jules Bianchi uh, was caused because uh, he sailed straight on when there was a re repair crane uh, in the corner on that track at the time, and he went into it and it killed him. So they said from there on there would not be any more safety vehicles on the track when when the cars were running around, not even under uh, virtual. Now, when you so. see this crash and you see it, here it comes, and there's a lot of debris, and you can't even see Checo's car until you get to that that moment when you saw that what were you thinking to me look i'm always very careful about being judgmental and i know that there are several hundred camera angles but to me it looked like um it was carlos's fault that he had moved over to the left i figured he was trying to get away from the dirty the dirty side um i think he came wide out of the turn mm -hmm and uh, he had to get back off the dirty line and i think that he came over but you know uh, the the stewards have looked at every angle and they came back with no we think you're both at fault so um that was it and therefore i'm wrong my eyes are wrong if that makes any sense um what i thought i saw was not necessarily what they saw and they figured they both were both at fault now i'm gonna take the total opposite of that I'm going to say they said it was a racing in incident. I agree. Okay, great. But Checo had an aircraft carrier of room to the, the left. He could have put literally the USS Enterprise on the left side of that track and it would have fit. I mean, he, he was trying to get a slipstream also. But what he forgot is he, he finally was going to get a podium. He was going to be in third and which is great form for him because he hasn't been on the podium in so long and he forgot maybe just hold station because you're not going to pass charles charles car was faster than your your car that day he, he was quicker on the straights he was better on the on all the turns the ferrari was a better car yesterday than the red bull so he should have just held station got his third place, got his podium, got good points for Red Bull, and kept them in the constructor's fight. But what did he do? He had the red mist. He uh -huh. had the red mist. It covered his visor. He thought he could get that second place, and he went for it. And then it went from him trying to get second place to him being in third, and then all of a sudden him being in fourth. And then he panicked. Now I went from the podium. Now I'm on fourth place. He did not turn that wheel at all. And what every driver has done on that turn, they, they go and they kind of start sliding a little bit. They kind of guide to the left so they can make the next turn. And he just held, they show the in camera, he just held, can you stop doing that? It's super annoying. And it's true. They, it, it, I can hear it. It's really loud. Um, Sorry. And so then he kept the steering wheel straight. He did not turn at all to the left. Mm. There's another guy right to your side. What do you think he's going to do? He's going to drift over. Everyone's been drifting over that on that part of the track. So he's going to do what he's naturally been doing for the last 50 laps. Uh, Checo. And red mist. Oh, and red mist. It's a red mist for sure. But yeah. I think Checo could have moved over because Checo had a lot of room to move over. <clears throat> Yeah, he could have. Um, I mean, there had been some swapping, as you saw. There was some swapping around, and it didn't pan out. But I don't know. I, I, honestly, like I said, from the very outset, when I watched it on camera, I went, oh, my God, Car Carlos, what have you done? And then I watched the replays, and then I hear different versions, and then the stewards come back with, no, you're both at fault. So I went, it was just one of those things. It's a racing incident, which is what it's been classified as. So I don't, I don't lie on either side of the argument 
whether it was Carlos came over pretty quick, whether uh, whether Perez should have known and was still trying to, you know, still trying to overtake. And I mean that that close from a corner, it was kind of dumb to be. You must he must have known that Carlos was going to come in. You know? Had to. He must have known. Had to. He must have known. So he took a risk, and it cost both of them. And then I believe I didn't get to see the full amount of this, but uh, some of the offshoots was that uh, what you call him uh, Perez jumped out of his car, and he went over and he was kind of remonstrating with Carlos, who was still stuck in his car. And I thought it was a bit um, unprofessional. It reminds me of Lu- uh, Russell with Bottas when they had a crash. Yeah. And he got it. You just don't do that on camera, you know. It just looks wrong. Yeah, I th- you know, there's always afterwards to talk. It's about definitely it. the red mist in effect, <clears throat> and I felt bad for both drivers because they had they had you know it was a great race for both of them. I mean, you know, Checo was in third, and that was great form by him, and Carlos was doing what he was supposed to be doing, and he was in fourth, and it would have been great haul of points for Ferrari, and it had been a great haul of points for Red Bull, but all to not. And that actually made it a lot more, those last couple of rates, uh, really intense, you know, because you have, you, know, you have Oscar and Charles, and then all of a sudden you have, you know, you have Checo and Carlos, and then right near the end, the crash. And that made the last laps of this race some are saying the, the best race of the, the season i wouldn't say that personally i would say it was the british grand prix but you know mm. i mean not only because i was there but because it was lewis first win in two years and that was kinda... that of course was an amazing moment for everybody <laughs> yeah, was... but i mean look baku is one of those tracks that uh, brings up either brilliance mm-hmm. uh, and lots of overtaking lots of strategy or it can be quite repetitive and the fact that we're seeing the guys having to use the entire straight with an absolutely measured like you've got to be within four tenths of a second to make that pass uh to me it made their race a bit boring and to hear the you know to hear the commentators like and he's coming up and he's oh yes look at the closing speed now oh he's not going to overtake no, he's not going to overtake. And you just like, this was like lap after lap after that. So he got a bit, you know, uh, but there were other things that were keeping us entertained. And one of them was realistically watching Charles on, on Lando, but there were other squabbles going on. Um, and I, I thought it was an interesting but boring race. <laughs> what did if, you, if that makes any sense. What did you think about that Christian Horner came out and said that they finally figured out where they the problem in their car came from and they don't have Adrian Newey there to fix this problem and it doesn't seem like they're going to be able to fix this problem and it's the same problem that Checo was complaining about you know since last year but because Max was winning all those races they didn't really take a look at the problem like in death with a, a, a fine tooth comb and a magnifying glass to fix it because Max is, you know, in the most dominant car in the history of Formula mm. 1 last year. So could Adrian Newey fix this car, Paul? Okay, well, I'd like to just take a step back for a moment and go backwards to when we discovered that Adrian was going to leave Red Bull. Okay. Okay. And I want to I want to go back to something which is um, Newey. We need to bang the drum that why was Adrian released from his contract so quickly? Mm. And, you know, people have said, like, was it goodwill or something else? Was it that the deal was that as long as he didn't join Mercedes, Ferrari, Mm. or uh, McLaren, that he would be allowed to leave earlier? And he said, and he said, look, it's not going to be, McLaren, Mercedes, sorry, it's not going to be McLaren, Mercedes or Ferrari. Mm -hmm. And they went, right, whatever it is, then it doesn't matter. You can leave early. Or, and I'm going to say this and be controversial. You're going to be controversial. Did he have something on RB? 
did he have something on Christian which allowed him to walk early? Because I watched a documentary recently. Um, there was a, a, a an ex-commentator who's got a sort of YouTube channel, mm -hmm. well done to him. And he asked Nui some questions. Now, i got to be honest, everybody, I think Nui is a brilliant mind. We give him all these great accolades. But if you watch Nui in an interview, Oh, what paint drying. What oh, a my. snore fest. Oh, what a snore fest. I couldn't do I, I have it. to be honest. I couldn't I have to it. be honest. We we have a we have a we have this YouTube channel, this podcast, etc. Yeah. If if Newey offered to come on the no. show, I would say thank you, but we'll just hold you in high esteem from afar oh. because my God, he is slow. <laughs> anyway, but he's still a brilliant designer. He's still a brilliant designer. I, I'm not taking that away from him, but oh my Lord, yawn fest. Anyway, my point here is, <laughs> my point here is we're never getting Newey on the show now. <laughs> and my point, honestly, oh, I know. Is, Why'd you do that? <laughs> I think, I, I'm sorry, everybody. I genuinely think that um, Newey was pissed off with them at the end uh, with the behaviors of whatever it was. I think that he and the, they intimated that he had been sidelined earlier than we all think that his view wasn't being taken into consideration. Mm. And this is one of the deciding factors for him to say, listen, I'm done with you. And I also obviously then all the bad press stuff and, and stuff that they were getting themselves into with Christine trying to take over the team, all that stuff. We won't go back into that, but, 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 and, and it's important to say, um, just because Nui is going to ask Martin, it's not like he's going to wave a magic wand. So you now have Nui, Aston Martin with lots of money. You have his ex, uh, Nui is his ex guy that he trained. And I can't remember who the head of, I'm getting lost with these technicalities now, but there's a guy already there who came from Red Bull previously and he was kind of running things for the moment. How is he going to feel now that Nui's coming back? The intent is that Nui's going to sort of like do it from afar. He doesn't want to be the guy that organizes people. Um, and there was a couple of other little points that I picked up on, but one of the things that Adrian said, and I found it very interesting, was when it was put to him, what's happened to the Red Bull? And he goes, and he actually looks at the camera type of thing, and he goes, well, I don't know. I've been sidelined since April. Wow. And, you know, another good point is, you got Andrew Newey, you got the wind tunnel, you got all these new things that they have at their factory. You got Alonzo still there, mm. but you got Alonzo and Lance Stroll. Alonzo, that's two years down the road. Alonzo will be like 105 years old. <laughs> and then you have Lance Stroll, who I'm sorry, I, I don't care if you give this guy the fastest, if you give him Max's car from last year, he's still not going to win the championship. The guy is, oh, did you see what he did to my poor Yuki? Do you, you see what he did to my poor Yuki? Put a he hole in him. put a hole <laughs> in the side, and he tried to this this maniac, this <laughs> ah, ah, He tried to blame Yuki. He dive bombed the corner where no one dive bombs ever at this racetrack, and somehow he thought Yuki should get out of his way. Like the guy just. Maybe he needs some like special glasses, or maybe they should Jeez. make some type of like bumper <laughs> on the side of his car. So then, when he's coming and he hits another car, the rubber bumper hits that car, you know, and then you won't take out a side pod. I mean, he's a walking disaster, this guy. I'm tired of him. And you got a guy like Franco Colin Pinto sitting on the sidelines who obviously has shown more in two races than Lance Stroll has shown his whole entire Formula One career. It's not fair. It's not fair. Ladies and gentlemen listening and watching America F1, <laughs> we've now managed to never get Adrian Newey on the show, nor Lance Stroll. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't care! We don't care! Okay, we let's be realistic. <laughs> How do you spell nepotism again? Uh, N -E, uh, Lance Stroll. <laughs> yeah, exactly. L-A-N-C-E. Um, yeah, look, it's got to stop. And the thing is... 
uh, let's be realistic for a moment. We're talking about Newey joining for something like $25 million a season wow. plus shares plus, yeah, I heard the figures. So it's 20, it's not 35 as everybody thinks. It's 25 plus bonuses plus shares. Okay. A lot of money. Per, per year, per year. And I think you know, he's a shareholder now. So even if the deal is done, he's not going to be relinquishing his shares or his partnership. They said he's got, he's got a partnership in there. This is the art of the deal with uh, Lawrence Stroll. He knows mm. how to do things. And and and, and uh, uh, Adrian said, look, I'm not a fan of Lawrence. I wasn't until I got to know him. And he said, and he is a very good deal maker and he won me over, even though we're very different characters. Right. So and it was a very interesting uh, um, interviews and stuff that I watched. But bottom line is, if I am Adrian, I am going to be saying to Lawrence, you know, Alonso may have all the will in the world, but he will not have the reactions in two years' time. He just won't. At 45, he won't. And second of all, you're now, you've been courting and you've got Honda coming in, works team. And then you've got that one seat that is required to be filled for the future. And it is not Lance. It's not Lance. And I'm quite sure Newey will have that word. And eventually Lawrence will go, okay, I can now use someone like Adrian and the partners and the shareholders to actually, you know, tell my son, look, it's time. You, you got to go because they're going to need some really top class drivers in there. And of course, we all know the rumors and the rumors are that now they want to go after Max and bring Max to Aston Martin. And of course, Max really likes Adrian and he trusts his designs. I so. would like to see Max go with Yuki because Honda's coming. So I'd love to see Yuki there with Max and to see what Yuki could do. I think, obviously, I think Max is a better driver than Yuki, but I think that pairing would be better than Max and uh, Stroll because Lance Stroll's ego, because, you know, he's a rich kid, so he has an ego. And his ego in racing ability would be it's already been destroyed under fernando alonso but alonso's really nice to him a lot of times he'll let him like if 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 they're like racing for 12th and 13th alonso let him go ahead and you can have 12th who cares you know or it's 9th and 10th oh you can have 9th i don't care max would completely obliterate him it would be 24 to 0 in qualifying it'd be 24 to 0 barring any engine failure in races and what would that do to not only papa stroll like babying baby stroll but baby strolls confidence and i'm calling him baby stroll because i love yuki and i'm still mad at what he did to yuki and i'm not gonna forget it i'm not i'm not i'm not so baby stroll needs to go and we need to get some real formula one racer in that other seat because i know alonzo's going to be around for one more year i know he's going to stick around for age or new oh on. he's he's got There's another no year in him the big switch is 2026 when they do new regulations a new engine new air uh new new wheel size i think as well so yeah but i just i don't see them you know, Alonso has been used for testing before, um, meaning, you know, he'd say in 2026, but, you know, he's tired. They're putting him in and out with a wheelchair. <laughs> um, it, it's, you know, it's come on. He's like, he's 45. Enough is enough. It, it, take your pride. Go home. <laughs> um, yeah. But, you know, he wants to win. I mean, that's yeah. why he's there. He wants to, you know, he wants to at least stand on top of that podium as a winner again before he's done. Yeah. So he might hang in there by his fingernails just to 2026. But they, but the, the choice of the team choice would be smarter to oust Alonso. And I mean, you could keep Lance there for 26, I suppose. But then the shareholders are going to get busy. I think realistically what's going to happen is Lance and Alonzo will stay there for one more year in 26. And the reason why I say that is because you're going to need somebody with good feedback on all the new packages that is going to happen in 26. And Lance. So will, you're saying you're saying 25, they'll still both be there, which is fine. Right. But you're saying 26, you one, still think they're going to hang on to Alonso I think, and Lance. I think one more year of the new regulations for Alonzo only because one, he's going to want to drive an Adrian Newey car. That's one. Two, 
they're going to need the feedback. And I'm sure that Lance that's Stroll right. can't give the feedback that Fernando Alonso can. So even no, he if can't. You that's go why out, I said Alonso is a good tester. Yeah. So even if you go out and say you did get uh, two other drivers, who's going to give better feedback than Fernando Alonso about the design of the car and the direction that the car should go other than Lewis Hamilton? There's nobody else on the grid that's going to give you that detailed of feedback. So definitely, I think Alonso is going to be yeah, there but one more you year. Got, you have to put into the you, you have to put into this equation now, Max. You have to. And I know all signs were all oh, Toto wants Max. Toto wants Max. But I think you now have broke ground. Newey is now at Aston. He's a partner he's a shareholder he's going to be their designer they're bringing honda in as a works team which i don't really understand the, the point of that deal uh, but remember max's glory days were adrian and a honda okay so i think he would be very enticed to go and follow him over to aston yeah i think that's it i you know why i agree with I don't know where Max is going to go. Is he going to Mercedes or is he going to Aston or is he going somewhere else? But I do Flip a coin think, or leaving. I think he's going to be leaving. I, I do really. If, if he has really a crap year leaving. next year, if yeah. he has a crap 25, you may not be able to convince him to stay. Yeah, I, I really you do. You may say that's it. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. And, and all the drivers, no driver really stays on one team their whole career. They all move around eventually. And yep. so I, I think this is just the evolution of a, Every driver, every good driver, like Vettel did it, Hamilton's do, did it twice now, Schumacher, Senna, they, they've all moved teams. And so this will be no different. Max will just probably say, hey, I'm comfortable with Adrian Newey. Hey, they're going to offer me a boatload of money. Eh, I'm tired of Christian Horner. I'm tired of what's going on here. It's time to move on. I could see it happen. Tired of losing races. I mean, my 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 dream, as everybody knows, I am a Lewis fan, and I am I was a Mercedes fan. I am a Mercedes fan. I'm not going to change that. But to watch Lewis go to Ferrari and win a championship potentially, three different teams, three different championships would be just stunning in the world of Formula One. Stunning. I don't think it's ever been done. No, and if it's he not, did it's that, it's never been done. If he did that, I yeah. hope and pray that on the day he wins that championship he retires just because you can't mm -hmm. you can't make it you can't write a better script you can't write a better ending to your career than that and i agree but i think he would i think he's going to do two to three years of ferrari no matter what even if he does win the championship next year it'll be all right boys i'm going from a tenth yeah i mean i could see that too but i always love do the calc i always love leaving on top and on that note what yes. do you have out of time. for the preview of the Singapore Grand Prix? What What's your prediction, Paul? Flavio Briatore to yell from the sidelines for whoever else is driving the Alpine to crash so the other driver can win. Oh, sorry, that was 2008. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Mm -hmm. Singapore is always an interesting one. I mean, it's a night race. Mo most of the time, for me, it's kind of uh, uh, it's mid. I've never really liked the Singapore as far as a race, like watching it. I've, uh, you know, I'd love to go there. I'd love to go to Singapore. Very it's hot. Yeah, it place. seems seems like a beautiful yeah. place to go to. And oh yeah, uh, we're gonna get the dragons, the Komodo dragons, on the track. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but what's your prediction? Are you, what, do you, what do you see happening at the Singapore Grand Prix? Street track. It's a street track again. Um, I think we're going to see a fight between, sorry, uh, between McLaren and Ferrari, I think, at the top with the spattering of Red Bull and Mercedes. I'm going to don't. I'm going to predict that this is going to be the race that Lando Norris makes a comeback and we'll see Lando Norris on the top step because if Hopefully. there's any race that he has to put his foot down and put a signature on this controversy of that Oscar Piastri is better than me, that who's the boss around here, that you're the captain now, all this BS that's going on. All right, well, a bit of clarification for everybody. Um, you know, there was a, a lot of a lot of moaning and gnashing of teeth over the result uh, where um, they needed to put team orders in place that 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 
Oscar shouldn't have overtaken Lando at the previous race Monza. and uh, in Monza. And then the team got together and they said, OK, look, you know, Oscar, sorry, Lando has the best possible chance of overhauling the points on Max for the driver's championship. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put in place that if it comes to a 50 50 between the two of you, Lando takes the lead. And then we go and have a 15th place pole position for uh, Lando because of a yellow, I mean, white <laughs> box flag yeah. during qualification, uh, which which throws his entire quality out and Lando ends up back lan languishing in 15th. And uh, the situation is completely overhauled. I mean, Oscar is now suddenly, he's just won his race, and now he's within uh, grabbing distance of overhauling the points to max. So what the hell does the team do now? I mean, it has to be equal racing from here for the moment. It has to go back to equal racing. It's not favoring Lando. It's not favoring Oscar. They both now have an opportunity. So whoever gets it on quali and gets it into the first turn, is is going to be allowed to run yeah or every, or everything the wailing and gnashing of teeth that happened last time two weeks ago has been overhauled and and now oscar's got every it's harder it's a harder run but, uh, but listen give me your sorry, prediction McLaren, who's winning this race Paul? well i'm well, just going to say mclaren don't care anymore as a team because they're now 20 points ahead of red bull so they don't care who wins as long as one of them wins i'm going to go with lando norris will win the Singapore Grand Prix. You heard it here first. Paul? Um, Singapore, I'm going to go... Uh, I'm going to go Lando as well. Thank I'm you for joining Lando. us for another episode of America Grand F1. We want to alert you that later on this week, we are going to have Scott Greenspan on, and he just recently got to race at Spa. Am I right? Paul, is that where he was? Yes, he did. Yeah, he was racing at Spa in the Porsche GT. Something. So he was racing the Porsche GT, I think he's GT3 RS? Maybe, yeah, yeah, I don't think it was the GT Cup cars. Maybe he was in the Cup cars, not the GTs. He'll kill us for not knowing. Yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll totally <laughs> destroy let, us for not let's knowing. Just, <laughs> let's just, just let Scott tell us, yeah. okay? <laughs> he'll tell us. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to have oh. Scott on this week, and he's going to talk about Spy, racing at Spy, and how that went for him, and the intensity. And from what I hear, he never crashed, which is awesome. because Compared to the eight other people that did. Yeah. So thanks for tuning in, and remember to like, subscribe, tell your friends, and hit the bell notification you can also comment on if you're listening to us on spotify you can actually leave a comment on spotify when you're listening to the show and tell us what you like what you don't like what you'd like to see more of and also give a good comment about how good paul's hair is starting to look lately <laughs> Yeah, America F1, America F1, it's a golden run. Well, ladies and gentlemen, F1. he thinks he's playing the theme tune again. They can hear it. But we can't hear it. <laughs> they, they, everyone can hear it. Everyone can hear it. It, it. It's in the machine. Okay. Keep on racing, everybody. <laughs>